Hi everyone, welcome to Art About Art, a channel I have created and my name is Carol. Um, stay to the end of the video to see how my painting progresses and to hear all of my six habits to avoid to be an artist or to do really anything that you want to do um, really well and wonderfully. Okay, without further ado, I'm going to begin. But um, this is a talking painting. So I'm going to be working on this piece of art and having a chat with you, my viewers, my subscribers and friends. Thank you guys for tuning in and thank you guys for subscribing. I've got 99 subscribers right now and just one more to make it 100. So if anyone feels that they have any inkling in them that wants to see more of my videos, please just subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be alerted for my new ones. Okay, let's get on with the video. All right, so one. So my first point is relying on, <coughs> relying on talent or inspiration to make art or to make good art or to do really pretty much anything. Um, I say this because talent and inspiration are both elusive. Now I used to sit beside a girl who was exceptionally talented and she still is a very talented lady now um, but I used to sit beside her and think oh I shouldn't even do art I'm not even talented why should I do art I'm not even any good at this I'm not even any good never mind talented so um so if you think about talent as something that you do or don't have, it can really be disempowering. It can be disempowering for you if you are talented because, well, you know what, I'm just talented. I don't need to practice. Why should I sit down and put in the hours when all I have to do is bring out my paints and paint a masterpiece every time? Impossible. Well, possible, possibly, but... I'm not sure if it's something I'd be relying on personally. I'd still rather sit down and do the practice and um, allow my talent to grow. That's my advice for you talented people out there. And you know, enjoy your talent by all means, but it's also an art and a craft and this and every craft takes time to grow and to develop. And the thing I would have to say about inspiration is I wouldn't go sitting around waiting for inspiration before you go make a piece of art. I wasn't necessarily inspired to make this piece of art I'm working on now. Point two is mismanaging your time watching TV and procrastinating. I know that this month I spent 90 hours watching Netflix. When I sat down after it and worked out how much time I spent, I was like, I'm actually thinking of, on, of, of taking Netflix off because you know what, if I spent 90 hours in a month on my art, I'd be a long way towards my 10,000 hours. It takes 10,000 hours to become a master, whether you're talented or not. But anyway, I'm just saying, all you've got to do is just show up keep making your art and you will have both inspiration and talent every day. Not every day but you'll get it. You'll get it on the days you need it. And the, the, that's what counts. It's not like you need to be inspired every day. You just need to sit down and do the work. <sighs> okay so the next one is resistance. And I, the point two does hit on resistance, but resistance isn't just about wasting your time. Resistance is a whole thing. That's why there's books on it. Um, there's a book called The, um, the War of Art, and I'm going to leave a link for it below so that you can listen to it on YouTube. And this book, like, I haven't finished it yet, but it... it it, it's blowing my mind. I cannot believe it. It's like I've done everything that book has written down <laughs> to resist doing art. And resistance is so tricky because it gives you really logical reasons not to do your art or not to do whatever it is you want to do. And it's like, oh my God. Like I, I read the book and I was like, yes, I've done that. I've done that. I've done that. And the reasons are beautiful, like there couldn't be better reasons. It's like, 
no, you know what, I'm not going to do art today because I've got to really make my lunch and do my exercise and, you know, do stuff around the house because it's really important to get that done and wash my clothes for work. I'm not going to do my art. I have to do these things. They have to be done, you know. Yes, they do. I'm not saying they don't have to be done, but isn't there a more reasonable way to do it that you're not spending all your time with it? Or there could be just like, oh, you know what, I'm too tired today. It will wait another day. It, there's a million reasons. I've used all of them. Resistance, like, just go, if anyone thinks they don't deal with resistance or they do deal with that resistance, go and listen to the link below. I'm leaving it for you guys. Enjoy. So before is, the next one is number four. And that is believing in yourself and believing that you deserve it, that you deserve your dreams. And um, the other part of four is believing you deserve it, but not being, not making it mean something about you if you don't get it. Um, I worked for, I still work in the fashion industry and I really, I want to work so badly as a stylist, oh my God anything I would have done. I did do anything. I worked for free. I did photo shoots. I did everything. Everything. I, I really like anything that was possibly there to do. And I just, it just never happened. It just couldn't, I just, I would see people get the jobs in it and some people were better than me some people weren't it didn't really matter they were getting them and I wasn't and I'd see people have careers in it and I'd just be like so upset because I'd be like it wasn't me you know I just wanted it so much and I made it mean that I wasn't talented that I didn't deserve to be a stylist I didn't deserve to be why should, you know, I just made it mean so much about me that it was like, it was really, it just made me really unhappy and angry and upset and it took a long time for me to forgive myself for not, for not being able to make it um, as a stylist and a long time for me to forgive the fashion industry. And yes, I do work in the fashion industry. It's really made me kind of open my eyes to see how, how it's not good for you to kind of be that attached to something. And whether you succeed or don't succeed at your art or whatever it is you're doing, you've still got to do it for the, do it anyway and treat it like a profession. And that's it. Just take it profession, go in, show up, do the hours, and if it's not for you, you won't do it. If it is, you'll keep going anyway, and that's it. And um, just, uh, I just think there's a space where you can do that and do it healthily, and there's a space where you can do that and you can be a bit self sabotage, which is where I went with it, and I wouldn't suggest that for anyone. Anyway, the next point, point five, is using only one source for inspiration. Um, oh, that word again, inspiration. Um, yeah, you know, um, I don't really know who or why anyone would only use one source of inspiration in this day and age. Are you serious? Just one? Um, but. I know that sometimes when you're starting off at something or you're new to something that you can be really, you can really get caught up in, like there's certain YouTube channels that I really love and there's points where I'd be like, I'd give anything to make a video as good as these people <laughs> and you know, I'd watch their videos and study their videos. When are they, when are they, you know, what are they doing? What are they recording? What angles are they doing? But you've got to look at it more as a place to improve your skill. And I can understand that if you're new to something, you need to start somewhere. So you'll start with one. But please remember to grow from the one because if you keep with the one and keep doing stuff that's like theirs, you're just going to become a watered down version of them. 
And let's face it, everybody else is already taken, so you might as well be you. And that's from Oscar Wilde. And um, so, so what I'm saying is, if you're inspired by one person or one artist, look at it, what it is you're inspired by them. Is it you're inspired by their how they use, like Frida Kahlo, you could be inspired by the fact she paints a lot of her emotions and a lot from her life. So you look at your own life and say, well, what could I paint from that? And go away. So maybe you're inspired by that. So maybe look at yourself and think, well, what? I look and see if there's anything you'd like to start with painting in your own life and start with that. And it's a great place to start because it's your experience and it's you and that's that's the you we want to see and um, see what you've got, see how you express yourself. We already know Frida Kahlo, we love Frida Kahlo, but what have you got to say? And so that's why we keep making art, isn't it? So we can express ourselves, not so we can express somebody else. Number, Number six, and this is listening to the wrong people. And... Um, I mean this in two terms. One in the sense of people who um, who give you the wrong kind of criticism. People who give you criticism for criticism because they're kind of jealous or because they're just like, they're dealing with their own, they, it's just not their taste, but it doesn't mean it's bad, it's just not their taste. Um, and that's one form of criticism. There's a kind of criticism that's constructive, like the person who will go, Oh, Carol, do you see that blue there? It's not working in the painting. Just get rid of it. And I'd look at it and I'd assess it. And I'd go, Oh, maybe that blue's not working. And maybe I'd paint over it. And then I do paint over it and I find, Wow, the painting looks so much better. I'm so glad I done that. Thank you so much for that advice. That's, that's, that's helpful advice. And then there's the person who would go, oh, I don't like that. That's just, and you'd be like, why is there, you know, what is it about that purple patch there that you don't like? And they'd be like, I just don't like it. I've had this so many times, especially in the fashion industry. And you, you just don't really know where to go with this. You're like, okay, um, you know, and if it's your, if it's your art, the great thing is that when you work on your own work, you're the boss, so you can just go, Okay, thank you. And then, do you know, that's the end of the conversation. But if you work for someone, you may have to take it on board and try to find a way around it. And my advice there is to kind of think up of a couple of options and if it's your boss, return it to them and see what they think. And the other type is people who are, the other type of people not really to listen to are people who are dealing with their own resistance. Because um, when you make art, or you're an artist, you're doing something that's your dream. Might be your dream, it is for me. And, um, and it's very, it's very confronting for other people to see people. I know it's kind of confronting for me, so I'm guessing it's confronting for other people. But I know, I, I feel that it's very confronting for people to see people going for their dreams when they're not. So you've got to be very careful to protect yourself. And I'm not saying that they don't care about you or they don't have your best interest at heart. They're just dealing with their own self. They have nothing against you. They're dealing with their own things they've got to deal with. And they just need that level of compassion where you'd be grateful to them, but also have the compassion that they don't have your courage to go out there and do something that they really want. So all they have to give you is love, because that's all there is. You can't, you can't be upset with these people. You just show them love and and keep keep working on what you're doing and keep going for what it is that you want. And so those are my six points. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Thank you for listening to me ramble on. I'm going to paint a little bit more, so. I'm not going to get the painting finished in this video, but I think I shall make another um, chatty video um, at some point where you'll get to see the finished painting. 
because um, I think I think it's a nice way to work to to paint and to chat.